media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Glad to be here. Thanks, Jim. Mark, you've been on a cross-country tour of the U.S. Is there anything that strikes you about the U.S. recovery that's taking place right now? Well, in New York, it seemed to be uh, you know more open than it's been in the past. And uh, last few days, I don't see people wearing masks. So uh, unless this um, this um, Delta virus or Delta variant uh, suddenly hits New York, uh, as it's hitting in other places. Uh, Things seem to be opening up there a little bit, but I, you know, I, I sort of have a sneaking suspicion that uh, you know this Delta virus, like the original one, is no accident. So it may be intentionally being spread, and unfortunately, we may have more problems. I hope I'm wrong. Who profits if uh, these variants keep popping up and becoming serious? Oh, well, no question, it's the pharmaceutical companies, and they're they're behind the whole damn thing. I mean, there's no question about it. I mean, when uh, hydroxychloroquine proves to be uh, a viable solution for something that's uh, cheap and uh, been approved and uh, blanketly uh, turned down and reinforced in the press, you know, but bottom line is the uh, financial press, uh, particularly the financial press in particular, you know, they're sponsored by the pharmaceutical companies in Wall Street. So if it's not going to make them money, uh, it's no good. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big, big, big skeptic of it. You know, I think the drug companies are out to make money, and I'm also the belief that, you know, we really haven't had any significant cures for diseases in decades. Uh, really, it was, what, uh, salt, salt uh, the polio vaccine. I mean, I don't think we've had a real cure for anything since uh, the polio vaccine, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe you could correct me. But, you know, they're not interested in curing cancer or any diseases they want to maintain the uh, status quo or make it worse so they can make uh, they can benefit when i say who's they or well, more likely i don't think individual doctors because so many individual doctors do revolt against the current uh, viewpoint you know about uh, not using uh, alternate drugs and methods to uh, cure the disease and many revolt against the use of masks when it was proved that it really did help you know, and you know, the surgeons, you know, laugh at it and say you really need something more significant. But doctors, I think, you know, many have broken away from the convention. Of course, they're ostracized uh, for, for doing that. But, um, you know, the bottom line is the uh, drug companies want to make this happen and uh, we're happy that it happened. Maybe they were involved on a conspiratorial level. You, know, you can read all kinds of research reports that were written. One, I think, Bill Gates is... Uh, co-authored decades back or I mean not even decades back years back about a supposed pandemic and what it would do to reduce reduce world population so you know I, I think there's a, a group out there however small they may be or how powerful they may be who really like to wipe out a bunch of people on the earth and uh, for their own you know their own financial benefit of some sort I suppose unless they feel there's not enough going to be resources and you got to kill off more more people just to survive. So anyway, um, to answer your question, the pharmaceutical companies, no question, benefit from this. And, of course, we also know the politicians benefit from it because they seem to have enjoyed gaining more power and exercising it. So my big question from day one is, you know, when this COVID hit, and I said it a year, a year and a half ago when the thing started, I said, what else is next? And why is this happening? And there's some motive behind this and just some accidental release of uh of a uh, of a virus, so we could speculate for hours about what that might be, uh, and uh, some of them, some of the theories I've come up with are pretty crazy, but uh, we don't have to get into those because people hang up on the interview and they think they're listening to uh, coast to coast, uh, um, the nightly coast to coast show. So I don't want to get into all that stuff, but you know there is some ulterior motive, and now you're seeing the Delta variant come up, and uh, you know, it, it, you know. I'm, it, Whatever it is, you know, there have been stories about the masks may be used because of the 
global warming situation. They may force us to do it because of global warming. I don't know why, but there's some stories banded about about that. Uh, as long as they can exercise control over us and suppress us and possibly even take away weapons here in the United States, which is, I guess, their big goal, because then they will control us completely. Um, uh, I think that's part and parcel to the whole uh, problem. So, you know, uh, you know, we're in the business, the stock market, education business here, looking at the markets. Uh, you know, we're, I'm, I'm not a financial advisor, but, you know, I do publish uh, financial research on uh, companies and, uh, and so we do, you know, some stock ideas for people. And uh, our goal is to try to benefit from whatever we see out there in the markets, individual groups, sectors, and, uh, and strategize on the overall market direction as best we can. As best we can. Mark, uh, crude remains uh, pretty strong for this time of year. Is this going to continue, especially with people having to uh, fuel up those uh, newly purchased RVs? <laughs> you know, um, there's no question about the relative strength, particularly we see the uh, U.S. dollar uh, uh, improving and crude oil not going down. And, you know, of course, you've got risk of war out there. Uh, we got the Chinese Taiwan situation. We got, uh, the, the Iranian situation. Then you had this conflict with Russia and Great Britain the other day where they were, uh, some ships were fired at. And, uh, you know, I think the risk of war is there. The aerospace stocks have been strong. Um, I think, you know, a, a lot has to do with, uh, the threat of, uh, war and, you know, crude oil would, uh, be a part and parcel beneficiary of that. And, uh, you know, the big washout we had, uh, a year ago, um, March, when we got down to what minus thirty dollars a barrel, and that freak uh, panic sell-off. Just on a technical measurement in my work, I can project to one hundred and thirty dollars in crude oil. And I can't tell you if it's in uh, three months or three years. I don't think it's three years, but I think something more is coming to the upside in crude. And uh, I think it's going to be a big surprise, particularly when you've got the globalists and the uh, um, the um, environmentalists, the, the green people, and the global warming people all poo-pooing crude oil and how we have to get rid of it. It's going to backfire on them, and I think it's already started. Why would Russia be holding military exercises just off Hawaii? For the same reason that uh, China launched the space station and it's flying over the uh, U.S. and scouting us out. And, uh, you, know, you know, these powers are trying to uh, test the will of the United States, and now we have a weak uh, alleged president, Biden. I call him alleged because I don't accept the results of the election. I think it was fraudulent. And uh, if they ever come out with correct voting, I think that will prove to be the case, particularly when you have a party, Democratic Party, which has proved to be criminal in their conduct in the last four or five years. So it, doesn't make, it makes a lot of sense that the election would be played with. But to answer your question, uh, you know, I think they're testing Biden. They know he's weak. And uh, they're going to get the upper hand where Trump would not allow this uh, to happen, I think. So I think it's just a, a, a power move, you know, based on knowing they have a, we have a weak president. We'll have more with Mark Leibovit right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mark Leibovit. Mark, what's going on with Bitcoin? Good question. You know, we tr- we, tr- we traded. We were uh, we traded uh, for our own accounts a little bit, and we also had it in the um, educational newsletter. But you know, we did trade a little bit of GPTC, which is the Bitcoin uh, trust. Um, part of me says everybody's really bearish on it, and it's probably one heck of a buy. Um, there was concern when it came down that China had kicked out the um, you know the um, the miners, those that have the high computer power stations that were able to mine for the Bitcoin, and this would drive the price down. And I guess it did when China threw out a lot of these 
people, but I think they're moving to other locations. So I don't know if the days of crypt, uh, Bitcoin are over. And of course, cryptos, I have another view. So we're in a corrective phase here. Um, we were actually long and two days back and it ran up and we sold it for a quick trade. But, you know, part of me says, you know, it went from, uh, from zero to, uh, you know, 20,000 and, uh, went all the way back, back down a couple thousand and then up to 60,000 and now it's back to the 30 and the charts say maybe it'll drop to 18,000, maybe. So we're sort of watching it here, but I'm just wondering if just another big play. Uh, last time we had a big correction, it took about, you know, a year and a half to two years for the big move to unfold again where it came back to new highs. So just as a technical comment, uh, I'm, I'm sort of neutral right here. We were long, but my gut feeling is you got to be looking to buy it, and I'm waiting some further confirmation. And as far as the whole crypto universe is concerned, man, there's 7,000 coins out there, and only a few are going to survive, but there will definitely be survivors. And this is a new wave, new generation of uh, conducting business, and it's not going away. Everyone, not everyone, but a good part of the people poo-poo it. And I don't think people like uh, Elon Musk or Mark Cuban or, uh, you know, any of other big players out there are talking about coins if they didn't feel there was some real, real merit to them. And I'm sure, you know, the Amazons of the world and, uh, you know, all the big companies are eventually going to have their own coins and some co- countries are going to have their own coins too. And, uh, my biggest concern is on the, uh, country level, whereas unfortunately the motivation for that is not so much to conduct business, but to monitor people's activities. But uh, we'll take that uh, one step, one step at a time. Uh, the worldwide uh, service Binance is pulling out of Ontario, Canada, because they fear regulation there will interfere with their trade in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So uh, they're pulling out by the end of the year. Is fear of regulation in the business uh, one of the reasons, perhaps, why Bitcoin fell? Yeah, and we saw this with cannabis stocks too. When 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 uh, cannabis and marijuana was getting hot, I got you know, I got in early on this in 2014. Many people know that I was one of the first, maybe I was the first or second newsletter out there to even talk about it. But. Uh, uh, oh, firms wouldn't let you trade the marijuana stocks. You couldn't talk about it. In fact, uh, there are texting services. Like I use a texting service if I want to send messages out, and if you put the word cannabis or marijuana into it, they close, they shut you down, and say uh, the carriers, meaning I guess the AT and T's of the world and all those that carry the signal, prohibit the use of that word. And I found out the other day if you use the word crypto or Bitcoin in the text, they'll shut you down as well. So I guess the big question is why are they doing this? And, you know, they're they're in fear of it. You know, probably strong marijuana hurts a bunch of people, a bunch of industries. We know for a fact that marijuana is um, uh antithesis of the pharmaceutical industry because see marijuana can't hurt you the way drugs can and there's been a lot of benefits of with marijuana, you know, anecdotal of course, but for thousands of years it was uh, used. And as far as the crypto is concerned, sure, they don't want that because that's a threat to the to the current system. So somebody's behind the AT&Ts of the world and the big carriers, and they're passing this down. And, and you're in the report you just got, it's all a question of suppression. And they're trying to suppress trends which are in motion, which will continue, and they'll ultimately be, uh, they'll be wrong, and they'll, or they'll be removed. And uh, the... The so-called powers of be won't be the powers of to be anymore because the masses will, uh, you know, will outvote them, so to speak, with with uh, with their money, you know, with their actions. So um, that's what's going on. It's suppression, and uh, it's not going to last. I mean, we had the Berlin Wall that came down. We had communist China, you know, uh, had a big revolt about a hundred years ago, and they turned down that uh, administration. And there's going to be all kinds of revolt. And it's, this is a different type of revolt underway, so it's just going to be a revolt, and it's going to succeed in time. What did you think of that UFO report that was released that said, we don't know what they are? Well, gosh, why bother putting out a report then? You know, you're really going to get me in trouble, Jim, because uh, you know how I feel about that subject, and um, uh, it, 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 was, it, was, it was just um, so aggravating, but it was somewhat predictable. Um, there's no way they're going to admit that they that they reverse engineered alien craft, or that they've met with aliens, or had um, uh, uh, 
contracts or uh, treaties with them. I mean, it goes way back to Dwight Eisenhower supposedly had a meeting with aliens and, uh, and they took photographs and they had, you know, photos, all kinds of stories. Some of these were released in some of the in documents that were released under the Freedom of Information Act. Of course, a lot of those were redacted, and they whited out or blacked out a lot of key lines and phrases. But we've got thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pages and documents and testimonials, and uh, there's so much going on. And, you know, they just don't want to say anything. Um, uh, the, the craft that was probably seen in those videos may not be an alien craft. It might be, as I suspect, possibly the reverse engineered craft that we have created that I heard about way back in the 1980s from my sources. There was one famous planetary scientist who made a uh, presentation at the United Nations back in the 80s actually showing pictures of these craft leaving the planet and heading out at extraordinary speeds and made a point of that. Um, and I'm, his name uh, escapes me at, at the moment. I can probably get that for you, but I had all this research back then and I have it in my files somewhere. So, it's a, it, the answer to your question, I'm making a long wind, it's a giant cover-up. It's beyond, beyond, beyond anything that even makes sense. And um, uh, it's been covered up forever. I, wanna, I, I don't want to mention names, but one of my good friends produced a film about this subject many years ago and uh, interviewed hundreds of people whose lives were threatened if they would tell the truth. And um, it, it's just unfortunate, it really is, because there's a lot of secret activity going on. They don't want us to know about it. Why? Uh, are they afraid that what people are going to panic? Uh, religious institutions are going to, uh, revolt. Uh, the political power that people have in, in government would, would, would probably break down if suddenly there was knowledge of several alien races here on Earth or, or in talks with people here on Earth, which is the story that I've been hearing for decades. Uh, what does that do for the government? People say, what the hell do I have to listen to you guys for? We got powers out here that can wipe us out in three seconds, and or have uh, you know uh, maybe millions of years of technology ahead of us. And what are we going to screw around listening to uh, some politician, whether it's Russian, whether it's uh, from England, whether it's the United States or of China? So the governments have to cover this up, I think, to protect their own real rear ends. And meanwhile, they they are benefiting so in directly and indirectly from contacts that have been made, or because of craft that have crashed that they've been able to take apart and, and, uh, and you know, reverse engineer on a certain level. So, uh, so much to this story. If you can talk about it for years. Uh, I'm not the world expert on it, but i got to tell you, I've been tracking it. With no exaggeration, for, for about 60 years, I've been tracking this event since I was thir 13 years old, reading every subject, interviewing people, going to conferences, and there's no question, you know, there's always a seed of truth in these stories. You can say there are a lot of lies and there's some and exaggerations and people trying to create events, but there's a major seed of truth in this, which which is beyond anything that anyone probably would be. Well, I think most people would believe it because, you know, we've been indoctrinated. We have Star Trek and we've got all this other stuff out there. Um, I was told that Gene Roddenberry, who produced Star Trek, actually was sitting at some private meetings from the government officials many, many years ago, uh, and I don't think he was uh, if, if he was supposed to be in those meetings, or they just let him in, but apparently a lot of the Star Trek episodes and stories were based on things that the government had, had revealed to him or were revealed in these meetings. So a lot that you're seeing in Star Trek is probably actually true. And another a very famous... Well, not famous, but important point. And I put this in my newsletter. I think I mentioned it several times on these interviews. And I don't care if people hang up or what, but, uh, if you look at the, um, the, um, the new space program, the secrets of the space force that was created by Trump, and you look at the insignia that was created, it is the identical insignia with very, very tiny variation to the, uh, Starfleet insignia that was used in the Star Trek, uh, television series and motion pictures. And, and it's almost like you can put them up right next to one another. They're, they're identical. So why did the United States Space Force mirror an insignia identically to uh, the Star Trek uh, insignia? And the answer is because it's all one and the same. We're in touch with extraterrestrials. The military are. And uh, we probably, we not, we're probably, I'm, I'm pretty confident based on my input and sources over the years, we have an active base on the moon. We also have one on Mars. And it's a giant cover-up of the century. 
So you can believe me or not believe me, and maybe I'll go to my grave and it'll never be proven, but I believe in the deepest part of me that it's true, and uh, we're being held hostage to the truth. It's almost as if, you know, uh, well, you know, you can say the Vikings and the Norwegians and others discovered the New World way ahead of Christopher Columbus, but it's like the New World is discovered, but nobody's being told about it. So it's like the story of Christopher Columbus, if you can use that as an example. He comes over, discovers the New World, but never tells anybody except Queen Isabella, but she never tells anybody else, and they just go about benefiting it themselves, and the mass doesn't even know about it for maybe dozens or hundreds of years. So it's almost that kind of thing. Major discoveries and breakthroughs have been made, but we're not being told for, the, for selfish reasons and the reasons of power. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, financial benefit of some sort, too. I guess if you can control space and you've got advanced technology beyond anything that we know of and you can control the planet, uh, why would you let anybody know so fast? So uh, I think that's what's really been happening. And that report that you referred to a moment ago is a disgrace because it just reinforces that it was all predictable that they were going to say this. It all reinforces my belief that the cover-up is going to continue until which time that somehow someone can break it in such a way that they can't possibly dispute it. And I don't know what that would be, but uh, I guess if you had a repeat of uh, that 1953 film with Michael Reddy, The Day the Earth Stood Still, where a craft lands on, on, the, on the grass in Washington, D.C., and somebody walks out, does it take something like that? But my, my, my input is that this is not the way the extraterrestrials conduct themselves. They're more private about it. This is not a show of strength. They're not here to destroy us, though there are some evil groups that I've heard about. But the bottom line is that it's a different scenario than that. I, but you just wonder what it would take to break the back of the government and, and, and their ability to continue to hide the truth. So uh, you got me on a subject which is dear, dear to my heart for decades. And... Uh, and I believe that, uh, I believe in what everything I said. The aliens probably have the answer to hunger and disease, but what's the money in that? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. You know, maybe they make the place utopia and that's not going to benefit the powers that be. But I think it comes down, and really what I'm thinking about, because you put me on the spot here a little bit, it probably all comes down to the potential loss of power. The loss of governments will lose power and control if the truth really comes out. People are not going to stand for that if they really know that there's several or more, one or more races here on Earth, or there's a, there's things going on with uh, people from uh, other galaxies and planets. And it only makes sense just looking at uh, the scale of the universe, how small we are, and how advanced other technologies could have developed in the uh, millions of years prior to our existence. And then, and just the scope of the galaxy tells you that uh, it, uh, life. I'm sure existed in many forms in many places, and the question is, have they been here, come here, going to be coming further? I mean, there's evidence they've been coming to the planet for thousands of years, you know, according to some research and ancient scrolls and ancient the writings about visitors and uh, craft that supposedly was flying around. Uh, I think the East, Indi the East Indian uh, uh, texts uh, talk about the craft that were flying around the wars in the skies and all kinds of stuff, and this goes back way, way back, so you have to... You know, you have to assume there's some reliability to that, those type of ancient texts. So, uh, mankind's been exposed to this for a very long time. And part of it is also religion, because you can start saying that some of the events that are depicted in the Bible could have been extraterrestrials, not angels. And certainly the powers that be in the religious institutions don't want to admit that, you know, I'm a religious person personally, and I believe in God, but I'm just saying to you, I think God's a spirit, and even if they're aliens, there's probably a spirit in the universe that they probably even pray to. But I'm saying to you, if, if, if the depictions in the Bible and the Old Testament, uh, you know, are really extraterrestrial contact, you know, whether it's Moses getting the Ten Commandments or Jacob's Ladder or any of the stories in the Old Testament, uh, you know, the, the church uh, and, the you know, the, the Christian and Judaic world wouldn't be too happy about that. So I think that's what also part gets down to the, the control and the power of the people. So religion would be jeopardized and uh, political institutions, and that's per perhaps the reason why the cover-up has gone on so long and may continue until, like I said a moment ago, until some event is so striking that they can't do it anymore, and we'll see if that ever happens. Mark, thank you so much for chatting with us, and have a great Independence Day. Thanks to you, Jim. Thanks for having me. 
My guest has been Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR newsletters, also known as vrtrader.com. If you have any questions for Mark or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.